And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. In acquiring power, a man must be careful of the means. Dan McKay was a man who knew and acquired what he wanted. Power, wealth, but in his rise to the head of a large gambling syndicate, he had also acquired enemies. Shot. What do you think it was? What am I paying you for? It's the third time in a week somebody's tried to kill me. Mr. McKay, get out there! Frank Ferguson. McKay sent for me. What for? Look, I'm a private investigator. License number 17949. Private investigator? Let him in, Corby. Since you can't take care of this job for me, I'm taking it off your hands. Look, Mr. McKay, I'm... I said let him in. Ferguson. Yeah? Leave your car. Walk up. seniority. Well, you're thinking up a clever answer. Can I come in? Look, don't get sore at me, little man. Can I help it if you're not up to playing bodyguard? Come in. Not you, Corby. As I told you on the phone, Ferguson, somebody's trying to kill me. That's unusual. This time, yes. Started with a letter I received a week ago, threatening my life. First, I thought it was the work of some crackpot. And they made three passes at me. You got that letter? Look, um, you got a good setup here. You can hide yourself behind your steel fence and your bodyguard. 
If you stay indoors, there's no chance of anybody getting close enough to you to do any damage. Why worry? I'm not worried, Ferguson. Then why'd you hire me? Let's say uh, I'm amused. My curiosity's been aroused. This whole thing intrigues me. Why don't you give it up, McKay? Three straight misses on your own table? I think you're real scared. You seen today's paper? So a couple of citizens received the same threatening letters, eh? Four. There's another one in last night's paper. A man named Jack Sheldon. Julie Roberts, half-check girl. Albert Dobbs, hardware clerk. Jack Sheldon, traveling salesman. And Dan McKay, businessman. Mm-hmm. Do you know any of these other people? No. She's a real good-looking doll. Four strangers, each marked by the same killer. Why? Must be some connection. Ferguson, I want you to find out what that link is. What connects me with a hat check girl, the little guy that sells hardware, the traveling salesman? I want you to find out all there is to know about them, where they're from, who they know, what they've done, everything. Sure. I'll call you. We both need lessons. <clears throat> to talk things over with Julie Roberts. Dobbs? No. No, he skipped out of his rooming house right after he got the threatening letter. And uh, as for Sheldon, the traveling salesman, he's traveling. Look, I'm paying you plenty. You find those two people. I want to talk to them. Sure, sure, sure. But it's going to take time. Oh, uh, by the way, McKay, somebody else received one of those threatening letters. A guy named... Gino Bravelli. Bravelli. I never heard of him. Put him on the list. Talk to him. Yeah, I did talk to him. He won't answer. What do you mean he won't answer? Bravelli met with an accident. <laughs> it to you, McKay. But the news that the killer has claimed his first victim is more than a little disturbing, isn't it? At first, when you received the letter threatening your life, you shrugged it off, casually dismissed it as the work of a crank. Then, in swift succession, three attempts were made on your life. Now, a man named Bravelli is dead. A man who, along with the others, received a threatening letter, similar to the one sent to you. What'd you find out? Who's Ravelli? What'd he do? He was a window washer, McKay. It seems that he fell out of a 20-story office window last night. Looked like an accident until that letter arrived at his house this morning. Ravelli was already dead when the letter arrived? That's right. Why mail a letter to a man after you've already killed him? Well, maybe the killer saw an opportunity to knock Ravelli off ahead of schedule and took it. You think that's what happened? No, no, no. I think the killer heard about Bravelli's accident and decided to make you sweat a little. So he penned a note to Bravelli. You get it? Yes. Yes, I do. Your nerves are showing, McKay. Here's a report on Julie Roberts. Hat check girl faces life. She's really a sweet kid. She is. Yeah. What about Sheldon? He's still out of town. There's no sign of Dobbs yet either but I've got a couple of leads to run down on him. You better get going.
it over and over again, haven't you? But the report on Julie Roberts has revealed absolutely nothing. Not a single link to connect the two of you and the mysterious threat against your lives. <laughs> It's Ferguson. He's here? Well, it's about time. Three days now. Not a word. No, Mr. McKay, he's not here. It's just that I found out something. Ferguson's been going around town asking a lot of questions. That's what I pay him for. Only the questions he's asking are about you. I don't like that. I don't like anybody prying in the back. Wait a minute. How did you find out? I just had one of the boys tailing him. I just thought it would be a good idea. Get away from that window. Maybe I've misjudged you, Carl. Ferguson's been spending a lot of time with this Julie Roberts dame. They're getting real chummy. What else did you find out? Max tailed him two days in a row to some little hotel on Sylvester Street. Only it wasn't until a little while ago he found out who Ferguson was seeing there. Dobbs. Albert Dobbs. Funny he ain't told you anything about finding him, huh? told you not to answer. Mrs. Ferguson, that wasn't by any chance the Roberts girl who answered. Yeah. I thought it'd be safer for her to stay at my place while I'm away. That's right. I'm leaving now, flying down to L.A. I think I'm on to something. Maybe we're on to something too, Ferguson. All right. But come out here the minute you get back. Understand? He's leaving town. Still didn't mention Dobbs? Nor Sheldon. Gotta get moving, Corby. I think Ferguson wants more than his fee. If he can put this puzzle together before I do, he might be able to cause me some trouble. talk with Julie Roberts would solve your problem, give you what you're looking for. But it hasn't, has it? Instead, the hours of questioning her have revealed nothing. Absolutely nothing. Miss Roberts, I'm a little tired of asking. I want to know everything that Ferguson left out of that report. Everything you know about me. I tell you, I don't know anything more. You've got to believe me. You said that, sister. That's all you've been saying. Please. I've told you everything I know. Please leave me alone. It's getting awfully late, and my patience is... Well, Ferguson, 
We got back from Los Angeles in a hurry. Julie, are you all right? Mm-hmm. Are you sure? Relax, of course she's all right. Get out, McKay. Please, Frank, don't. Oh, so now it's Frank. Cozy. Get out and take your monkey with you. I don't know what you're up to, but I hired you to handle this. Yeah, I'm handling it my way. You're the investigator, Ferguson. Just remember, I'm used to getting what I pay for. Good night, Miss Roberts. The pressure is building, isn't it? Since Julie wasn't any help to you, your only hope now is Dobbs, that he holds the key to the mystery. That once you've talked with him, heard his story, you can add things up. And you've got to add things up, McKay, soon, before it's too late. I hope Mr. Dobbs won't mind my letting you in like this. We're old friends. We just want to surprise him. Yeah. Lock the door, will you? dog in the alley. Knock the lid off a can. Never seen you like this before, jumpy-like. It's not like you. All right, so I'm jumpy. What do you expect? I don't like this setup, Carl. I don't like it at all. I've always known who my enemies were. I've always been able to take care of them. Ever since I was a kid, all I ever had to do was to get my hands on them. This time, I don't know who I'm up against. I don't know who's for me or against me. All except you, Carl. You're the only one I trust, Carl. What's keeping this guy? Why don't he show? Maybe he's really scared. Skip Tom. Scared? Yeah, maybe he's scared. You know, it's funny. Before you get in a letter, nothing to connect you, nothing to tie you up. All right, all right. We've been over all that. Why don't you tell me something I don't know? Why ask me? That's Ferguson's job. Carl, I already told you. You're the only one I trust. Yeah, you told me. This whole thing is like a nightmare. What's a man supposed to do? How do you fight your way out of a nightmare? How do you fight something you can't even see? Something you can't get a hold of? You have to keep trying. Don't worry, you'll figure something out. You and Ferguson. Never mind Ferguson. I'm working this out with you now. All right, so you're working it out with me now. You must have made one enemy sometime in your life. Who doesn't? Everybody makes enemies. What's the difference? Well, it seems to make quite a difference now. All the enemies I ever made, I took care of them as I went along. Well, there must be one you didn't take care of. That's just it. I wonder who it can be. Who did I step on that I can't remember? Might be better if he never found out. What do you want me to do? Wait around like a sitting duck until he finds me? No, you can't do that. the police. I'm in the same boat as you are. I got a letter, too. Be much safer to come along. We can talk everything over on the way. On the way? Where? To my place. Talk as much as we like there. Maybe add things up. Find out who's trying to kill us. I don't know. I can't trust anyone. It might even be you. Could I see your letter? All right, 
I'll go with you. kill you, Mr. Dobbs. No idea at all. No. No. No idea at all. You don't know the Roberts girl or Jack Sheldon. That you're frightened, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. All right. Suppose you start in. From the beginning. I want you to tell me everything there is to know about yourself, Mr. Dobbs. Where you're from, where you've been, what you've done, who you know, everything. I... I see. Go on. Well, I... I was born in Portland, Oregon. Portland. Might as well pull up a chair, Corby. This might take a long time, but I've got a hunch it's gonna be worth it. As a small boy, I didn't have many friends. Stayed pretty much by myself. Only... my brother. He was older. You know how those things are. How a smaller boy always looks up to a bigger one. I guess I was pretty much of a nuisance to him at times. Once, my brother built a tree house. Oh, it was wonderful. So high, so very much away from everything. Even more than your place here, Mr. McKay. Much more. Now, let me see. Must have been about two years after that that I... No. No, it was about a year after that that I went back to Los Angeles. Where did you live there? On 54th Street, near Figueroa. What did you say? 54th Street. I had a small flat near the... What's the matter, Mr. McKay? Your thoughts are racing back through the years, aren't they? Back to an unfortunate little affair on 54th Street in Los Angeles. It was nearly 20 years ago, wasn't it? Yes, you remember the night well. You were just getting started then. Selling protection. That was the night, wasn't it, that your methods of persuasion proved fatal. The night you killed a man who ran a grocery store. Corby. Yeah? You better turn in and get some sleep. Oh, that's all right. I don't think I could sleep. Corby, you better turn in. And the boss. Now, Mr. Dobbs, about 54th Street in L.A. If you'll tell me a little bit more, I'm certain we can identify our would-be killer. Yes, you're certain now that it's only a matter of minutes before you'll be able to put the pieces of the puzzle together. The story that Mr. Dobbs has just told you, it's proved very helpful, hasn't it? And his words have finally established the link with the past. Hello. Hello, Ferguson. What do you want? You can thank Julie for this call, McKay. I was in favor of letting you sweat. But I guess I'd better tell you. I found your man. His name is Maxwell. He plans to kill you and then give himself up. Yeah, yeah, I remember that grocer being murdered. Not that I had anything to do with it. You mean they were never able to pin it on you? Well, this guy couldn't get close to you, but he figured out a way to get you to come after him. He sent a couple of letters to strangers, then one to himself, and then one to you. I don't get it, Ferguson. He knows you'll want to talk to him. But the first time he gets you alone, he'll kill you. The guy is a dead grocer's brother. His name is Maxwell. Only we know him as Albert Dobbs.
Okay. What is it? I heard a couple of shots. McKay! The search is over, McKay. An acquiring power. A man must be careful of the means. Thank you.